Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast Radio. Good morning, I'm Carl Fitzpatrick and welcome to Business Matters. While the Dubai government-owned Emirates is a global airline and prior to COVID-19, Emirates operated double daily Boeing 777 operations from Dublin to Dubai and onwards to 150 destinations worldwide. The country manager with Emirates is Enda Carneal and he joins me now. Enda, the pandemic has certainly grounded the airline industry, but start by providing us with a sense of Emirates' size and scale. Good morning, Carl. Good to be on with you. Well, Emirates is a global airline gathering customers from all continents and channeling them through Dubai onwards to about 150 destinations, about 300 aircraft. It's a long haul to long haul operation, so we've no smaller aircraft. On Ireland, we were operating 14 flights per week using Boeing 777 aircraft, 360 seater. And sadly, since COVID has struck, that's been reduced down to four flights a week. But we also, our second aircraft we operate uh, is our A380. And that's uh, 629 seater. So we're the largest operator of that aircraft with about 115 of them. So a very big airline, very global reach and offering you know, a range of services on board from first class, business class and economy class. We know that both airlines and cruise lines have been two of the most negatively impacted sectors as a result of COVID-19. But in terms of its impact on Emirates, has it been in line with other airlines? Our business would be off by about 80 to 90 percent, which is probably the same for every carrier. Um, on Dublin, we suspended operations on the 24th of March and we resumed with cargo only flights at the end of April. And we built that up now to four per week. One of the, I suppose, advantages we have as an airline going through this is a very strong cargo business. So each of the aircraft we operate in Dublin carry 25 tons of cargo in the belly. So even though the passenger numbers have been quite modest since COVID struck, the cargo business has been really very important to become the spine of the airline. Now, that's very interesting. And what can you tell us about the cargo that Emirates are flying in and out of Ireland? Really anything, Carl. I mean, we're pharmaceuticals, medical equipment, seafood, dairy produce, computer servers. Um, from Ireland, going to Dubai, Sydney, Singapore, Hong Kong. Inbound, we're carrying a lot of food. Early on in the, in the COVID crisis, we were carrying a lot of PPE. That's now been replaced with masks. They're coming in from the Far East and the Middle East. We also carry live animals from time to time. So really, you'd never know what was underneath the floor. And and what changes has Emirates made to mitigate the effects of COVID on the overall business? Well, I suppose we've taken a lot of capacity out straight away. So really early on in February, we began reducing frequencies. And, you know, from March, really took a lot of capacity out. But then, you know, we still have passengers who want to fly and have to fly. So we've taken a lot of actions to improve the safety on board, uh, health and safety in terms of the passenger experience. So everyone travelling on Emirates now must produce a negative COVID test before they board. All the staff are in PPE, everyone's wearing masks on board and the cabin air is changed every two to three minutes. So a lot of extra measures put in place to, 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 to make sure people who are travelling are safe. And which of your Irish routes have been least affected by the pandemic? Well, one of the earlier routes coming back to us was Dubai, in fact. However, very important routes for Ireland, such as New Zealand, Australia, Thailand, South Africa, they're still closed. So the, the number of connections we have from Dublin is, is, is only a fraction of what it was. And a lot of work, a lot of regulations will have to be lifted around the world to open up markets before we can really see passenger numbers increase to pre-COVID levels. Airframers have seen aircraft deals evaporate because of COVID-19 and Boeing has been under pressure since its March 19 grounding and they've yet to secure any major deals since then. Of course, Ryanair has used the pandemic as an opportunity to negotiate a deal with Boeing for a fleet of new aircrafts. But has Emirates taken a similar approach? No, it's a very good question. We've actually taken a a different approach. Our fleet would be all wide, so-called wide body aircraft. So no smaller aircraft, 737s or Airbus A3. 20s. And a lot of airlines have actually retired a lot of their large aircraft. So we believe that when travel returns, Emirates are actually going to be very well placed because we'll have the capacity to carry passengers where other, other airlines may have gotten rid of their bigger aircraft. Of course, Emirates is owned by the Dubai government. So what state supports has Emirates received since the onset of COVID-19? I don't know the answer to that, Carl. Um, I mean, th- th- one, of the, one of the points around you know, state support is 
it's like eating bread is soon forgotten. So, you know, your business model has to be resilient going into this to be able to come out of it. And that's something that Emirates has a very strong business model. So whether or not support is given from the government, I think ultimately the business is strong enough to be able to weather this storm. And then the, how has the Dubai government differed from the Irish government in their approach to air travel? Well, I think the Dubai government's view is, is very much, you know, Dubai is an open market and, you know, all airlines are welcome in. I think one of the early rules they put in place from the 1st of August was that everyone travelling had to present with a negative COVID test. So we're one of the only airlines, uh, I suppose the UAE and the only countries, were acquiring that. And it just means that when people are travelling, they're reassured that everyone on the aircraft has presented with a, with a negative COVID test. So maybe there's not so much worry of catching something off one of your neighbours on board. And how reliable have those tests been? I mean, so far, so good. They've been 100% reliable. Um, we've had no cases that, that I'm aware of, certainly, on board the aircraft. I mean, really, what we want to try and get to is almost a door-to-door sterile situation as you go through from Dublin to Dubai, through Dubai, connect on with your onward flight, that every every touch point, you know, is COVID-free. Everyone you're coming across has been tested. And that's what we're working to do to reassure customers that it's safe to travel. And, Enda, in your opinion, has the Irish government been too strict in relation to air travel? Well, I mean, you know, I mean, it's not for me or for an airline to comment on government policy. Um, our view is that government restrictions and public health advice has to be observed. You've got to play with the hands you've been dealt. I think there's probably pressure coming now for more air- airport testing um, and for having, you know, more testing on the ground, either through airlines like ourselves or at various airports, so that when people travel, they're reassured that it's safe. But, you know, we all have to follow the advice that's given from, from, from the government. And, you know, that's, sort, that's just the way it is. So as a result, are you calling for the Irish government to introduce mandatory testing at airports? Well, I think that there are a number of restrictions that are in place. The quarantine on the inbound for inbound customers, the restrictions of non-essential travel. Obviously, you know, every airline wants those lifted because it means then, you know, any stigma associated with people travelling is lifted. But obviously, that has to be mindful of the of the advice at the time, and we have to work with that. But certainly, I think it would be a very positive step if testing regimes could be implemented at Irish airports, which would at least would give, again, re- further reassurance to customers that it was safe to travel. And apart from mandatory testing at airports and lifting of the quarantine requirement for inbound passengers, what else would you like to see the Irish government doing with regard to air travel? The green list is largely irrelevant now because the, the overall restriction is on non-essential travel. Um, that would need to be lifted. And, and in doing so, I think the, 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 the testing at the airports. I mean, there's three. I mean, the, 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 regulatory system, the regulatory piece has to be addressed. I think stakeholders like ourselves, like airports, air, airlines and airports, we have to play our part as well. But it's really about confidence. It's really about assure, reassuring customers that, you know, every possible um, mechanism and measure has been put in place to make your trip wherever you're going as safe as it possibly can and I think we don't have a vaccine we may not have one for another year so we'd have to live with this but I think even if there's certainty on a vaccine coming that would begin to open up you know levels of demand but we really won't see things returning to pre-COVID levels I don't believe until a vaccine is in place. And of course the Irish government has already committed to switching the green list for the EU's traffic light travel list system. Is this switch welcomed by Emirates? I think it's a welcome move in general in terms of getting people in the air. I mean, it's specifically, I think, aimed at intra-European travel. So it wouldn't really apply to Emirates. But anything that gets people moving, anybody, anything that gets you know, our airports a little bit busier. I mean, Dublin Airport, um, I'm here at the moment, it's like a ghost town. Anything that can get people moving is good news for our industry. And obviously, as people begin to travel more, they will travel further. And we will hope they would choose Emirates when they do that. And of course, Ryanair were recently unsuccessful in their case against the state in challenging the government's international travel restrictions. Were you surprised by the verdict? No, not not really. But really, it's, it's not something that we focus on. I mean, we're focused on our own network, on our business model. Uh, and continually trying to find ways to make it safer and, and better for our customers. I, I, I leave the litigation to Michael. And then, the, are you of the opinion that COVID-19 has changed air travel as we know it forever? I think it possibly has. In the same way, you know, before 9-11, there was no restrictions on carrying liquids on board and all of that. And then that changed. And now it's, it's just part of what we expect. 
I think into the future, we may have a situation, if you like, similar to if you have to get inoculations going into a country that maybe has typhoid or malaria, you have to prove you're, you're, you're vaccinated before you travel. We may have that for COVID where, you, again, a check-in, you have to show that you've had a negative test. But I think the, the travel genie is out of the bottle. People want to travel. Airlines like Emirates have made the world a smaller place. So that's not going to stop. Just how we do it and how we travel may change. And Enda, do you believe that it's going to take a vaccine before many travellers resume long-haul travel? So I think it, it, it'll, it'll take maybe a vaccine before we get back to the kind of numbers we had pre-COVID. But I think people won't wait until, un, until that. People want to travel. Um, and I think as long as enough reassurance is put in place, and we talked about airport testing, airlines looking for tests, as long as people have that confidence, they will travel. They won't wait for a vaccine. I think when, we, when a vaccine comes, you'll see a stampede. But before that, you'll see gradual increases in the number of people travelling. And of course, Emirates is well known for its business class travel. And with that in mind, will technology such as Zoom and Microsoft Teams impact the future of business air travel? I don't think it will. I mean, my own view is that people probably are, are already a little fatigued by Zoom calls and Zoom quizzes and, and Microsoft Teams and that. I don't know that you can substitute that for a grandparent giving their grandchild a hug in Australia, having travelled to see them, or you know, business people meeting doing a deal, signing on the dotted line, contracting. I don't know that it'll, it'll replace that. Certainly technology has come on and people have seen its power, but I think we're all very social animals and I think you know that, that face-to-face is, is very important. I think airlines will play a very important role in bringing that back in, in, into people's lives. And from an industry perspective, are you expecting that there will be at least some casualties in the international airline market as a result of the pandemic? I think we will. I don't know who they'll be. Um, but certainly there are airlines who are getting bailouts who probably without the bailouts would have gone bust. Um, there are those who are getting bailouts that may still go bust. Um, but there's a wider story here. I mean, there's the, the, the wider supply chain, airlines, travel agents, tour operators. It, there's a huge ripple effect right through. But certainly on the specific question of airlines, yes, around the world, there's bound to be airlines that just won't get through this. We're coming into the winter time now where, you know, loads tend to ease off a little bit before the Christmas rush. And this is a real tri- testing time for airlines. They haven't got the same kind of seat factors as they would in the summertime. This is obviously pre-COVID. So if you take COVID into that equation as well, it'll make it doubly expensive and difficult for some airlines to survive, particularly those perhaps who are leasing aircraft, they still have to pay the leasing charges even though the aircraft maybe aren't flying. So yes, very difficult times ahead. And as somebody with one eye in Dubai and the other on Dublin, how has Dubai approached life after lockdown differently? Certainly, they were locked down for a a, a huge period of time. Things have opened up now. There's huge energy going into ensuring that hotels, um, attractions, restaurants, there are proper uh, measures in place, mask wearing, you know, cleanliness, all of the social distancing, all of the features that we're pushing in this country. I think they've been adopted strongly in Dubai. You know, it's a city that's very dependent on industry and commerce and tourism. It opened up for tourism on the 7th of July. And an awful lot of work has gone in even since then to, again, reassure visitors that it's safe to visit there. So I think maybe it's a bit more of an integrated approach, but, you know, that's a bit easier in in a big city rather than in a a country like ours, perhaps. And finally, Enda, if we look to the future and we assume that there will be a vaccine available by mid-2021, how long do you think it will take for passenger numbers to reach those experienced in 2019? I think, Carl, if you ask an airline manager, they'll give any airline manager, they'll give you a different year. I think next year will tell us a tale but it probably won't be until 2022 when we see real volume return. Um, there'll still be fear out there. There'll still be people who will decide that they will put off that yearly trip to Australia. Other people who may feel that, you know, we'll, if we're going to travel, let's make it ha- make it worth it. So they go maybe on one big holiday a year rather than several small ones. So even if people are traveling again, people's travel habits may change and they may just travel slightly less. It's very difficult to know. Well, if you've just tuned in, that was Enda Cornell, the country manager with Emirates, and I'd like to thank Enda for providing us with insights into the business and his outlook for the future of the airline industry. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast.